My name is Jesse Hamilton. Uh, I joined the Army in 1998. I spent four years with the 101st Airborne Division. I served as a 13 Foxtrot forward observer. Um, during my time there, I got out and joined the reserves, uh, spent about three years as a drill sergeant. And then I uh, decided I was going to uh, volunteer to go to Iraq and serve as an advisor to the Iraqi Army. Um, at the time I volunteered, I was completely against the war. I thought that it was unjust, but I thought that uh, in order to help expedite um, our exodus from that nation, that uh, I really needed to do everything I could and serve in any capacity I could over there to, uh, to help that cause. Um, I've lost friends in Iraq, uh, Americans and Iraqi. Um, I'm not up here to say anything bad about the U.S. soldiers or about the Iraqi people, the Iraqi soldiers. I, uh, I also want to say that my testimony is, uh, is just based on the things that I saw in one battalion uh, in Fallujah in the Al-Anbar province of Iraq from 2005 to uh, 2006. And I could sit up here and give my opinion about uh, the U.S. ROE all day, but I think that my, uh, my brothers in arms up here have, have done a good job in portraying that. Um, I worked as, a ten, uh, as, as part of a 10-man team while I was in Iraq, so I really didn't have the opportunity to serve with a, a lot of different uh, uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers and Marines over there. Um, I did uh, have the opportunity to work with a lot of the uh, Iraqi forces that are over there. And if you want my opinion as to whether or not rules of engagement actually exist within the Iraqi army, um, the answer is no. Um, from what I saw, the Iraqis show uh, little or no restraint um, in discharging their weapons. Uh, Fallujah is obviously a, uh, a city. Uh, it was populated with civilians at the time. And it, uh, the, the fact that the, the Iraqis uh, showed little or no restraint, um, you know, add the civilians into that, it, it created a dangerous mix. Um, we had uh, we had some phrases. I'm sure that uh, there are a lot of uh, soldiers and Marines out there who were in the cities who worked with the uh, Iraqi Army would recognize these phrases. Uh, spray and pray, where the Iraqis would just start shooting and uh, pray that it hit the enemy if there was one. Um, the death blossom was also a, a term that we used regularly, because once uh, the shooting started, death would blossom. Uh, all around. I never saw um, any civilians get killed um, by these actions, but uh, I, one incident sticks out in my mind. Um, I lived out in the city and um, the, the whole time that I was in Iraq and on, on an Iraqi uh, firm base. And we would the, the enemy would take pop shots at us. They would shoot RPGs at us. We would get mortared. And as soon as something like that would happen, the uh, Iraqi guards on the roof would just uh, start a barrage of fire. It, it didn't matter where um, the, the fire had initially come from, or even if it was just mortars uh, or a combination. Um, uh, they would just start shooting. I ran up to the roof one day, and I was, uh, I was trying to see, you know, if, if there was an enemy, and if so, you know, where that enemy was. Um, I couldn't see any uh, incoming fire at the time. Um, it was daylight. Um, but I did see uh, the Iraqis just shooting indiscriminately, and that was normal. Um, I saw a, uh, a civilian just running, and the wall that she was running in front of was just being pattered by bullets. Um, the Iraqis weren't shooting at her. Uh, I know that for a fact. They weren't aiming at her. Um, they were just shooting indiscriminately. And again, that's uh, where that dangerous mix comes in.